special of the Krypton Report. I have, of course, your host, Tyler, and with me is the great and legendary Phil. Legend. Phil, say hi. Hi. That's right. Legend of the Phil. <laughs> We're going to be doing a, a special on the 2013 animated film Superman Unbound, and this was the last, and I was looking at this, this is the last Superman solo film they've done in the animated world. This was, uh, and I was looking, I think this this was the last one before Flashpoint. Yeah, it was. But, I mean, they haven't done a solo one since. Uh-uh. So, and this was released the same year as Man of Steel, you know, 75-year anniversary of Superman. So, it all kind of coincided together. And um, I remember when this came out, I was poor, so I wasn't able to go and uh, buy it right away like I wanted to. But I did rent it the day it came out. And watched it. It's based off the Brainiac uh, story arc from Jeff Johns. And it stars Matt Bomber as Superman, Molly C. Quinn as Supergirl, Brainiac as John, was, is played by John Noble. It's the 16th DC animated film. And I think that's kind of crazy when you think about how many of these animated movies they have done. Mm-hmm. And I have all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at them like, dang, that's a collection. But I mean, like we talked about this year. What is it this year they're going to release? Four? Yeah, I thought I heard you say before it was like four or something. And I mean, four, but technically five? Because we had Batman Bad Blood, mm-hmm. Justice League versus Teen Titans, The Killing Joke, mm-hmm. and then we're supposed to get the Justice League Dark film. It said fall of 2016. And then the technically the fifth one is the Return of the Cape Crusader animated uh, Batman film. Is that this year? It's coming yeah. Huh. It comes out November 1st on disc. Huh. And it's like late October digitally, but I'm always about the disc with these things. So, I mean, just think about that, Phil. I mean, this is a big year for DC. We got two movies in theaters, five animated films. Mm-hmm. We're going to get a new animated series and plus everything that's going on on television. Do you remember back when we just got one of these like every year or every two years we got an animated movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember. And then all of a sudden we started getting two a year. We were like, woohoo! <laughs> now we're getting like, they're just cranking them now. But, it, I but mean, if they want to keep up this pace, I mean, they are doing Justice League Dark, but are they going to have to expand beyond Superman and Batman? That's, yeah, I mean, let's, can we go back around? Since they've kind of built this animated canon, because it seems like what they've been doing is they release one or two that are tied to the continuation story. And then they release one based off a graphic novel, you know, or one that's an original piece. But I'm, I'm like, if they're going to do this, like, let's revisit a solo uh, Wonder Woman or a solo uh, Green Lantern or a solo Flash or Cyborg or heck. Give me, a, like I said, they're doing the dark stuff. Expand on that. Where's Green Arrow's animated movie, you know? Well, that's what I I never I don't know why they don't uh, capitalize on that. I mean, you got Flash and Arrow on the CW. You think they'd get some solo animated stuff, or even a team up? Yeah, I mean, or Vixen. Like some of the other characters have kind of broken out a little bit more in the TV series. Do them together on the an animated film. Mm-hmm. But I did hear this the other day on a podcast. I don't know if it's true, but the rumor is that this Return of the Cape Crusader is supposed to be like a sequel to Batman the movie, the Batman 66 film. Hmm. And if if that's true, how cool would it be if they decide to start doing continuations of the film series is like um, doing like Tim Burton, Superman, th- or oh gosh, Tim, well, that would be cool actually. Uh, do a f- Superman Lives animated film, do a uh, Batman 3, what Tim Burton wanted to do, continue the, show mo- the Schumacher with Batman Triumphant animated. I mean... I'd watch all those animated. Or even, like, do a continuation of, like, if Tim Burton had made a third Batman movie. You could probably even get... I wonder if you could get Michael Keaton to do the voice, even. Exactly. I mean, we know that there are stories for these. We know that there were some sort of a script and production. Like, how cool would it be? It's a low risk. And 
way of finding it, you know, continuing those visions and people enjoying the stories that they've wanted to see. Oh, you know what you know what they can do a continuation of? The John Wesley ship flash only got one season. Yeah. Give me an animated like nineties flash movie. So anyways, let's get back to good old uh Superman Unbound. Uh I like the animation to this film. Mm-hmm. It's 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 rugged, but I really enjoy it. And Matt Bomber is the third best Superman voice to me. What about you? Do you do you like him voicing Superman? Yeah, he's pretty good. Um, he his he reminded me a little of um, who is it? Tim Daly. Yeah. Because at first I was like, wait, who is that? No, that's not him. And I mean, Matt Bomber was one of the people that was actually uh, could play Superman live action. He was actually rumored there for a while hmm. to be in consideration for. A live action. I do like this has Lombard in it, which is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's the one thing I ask about BVS. Where did he go? Not even not even one line of dialogue like when you know he says, "Can't you're on sports today?" Not even like Lombard's out sick or Lombard's away. Not even a line of dialogue that that explains where he's at or ties him in. No, just nothing. There was too much going on. <laughs> yeah, there was, but. Um, I really enjoy the Clark and Lois dynamic in this film. Mm-hmm. Lois is definitely a, portrayed very well as more of that rough uh, woman, tough girl. And what else I like about this is tying it back. Is it has a very strong Supergirl storyline. Yeah, yeah. But the the whole – I had a little problem with the whole Clark Kent, Lois Lane thing. It's like I understand he wants to protect her, but he, won't even, he didn't even want anyone to know Clark Kent was dating her. Yeah. I mean, maybe someone be like, oh, Clark Kent, and they start thinking about it. Maybe just because it, it draws attention to Clark again, and Clark's supposed to kind of be in the background. That makes me feel like Clark should be just like a copy boy or like a night janitor or something mm-hmm. so that nobody ever sees him. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but that's just digressing. One thing I did like about this is too often Brainiac – and you can help clarify this for me. Is Brainiac gets tied to some people have him as Kryptonian origin. Mm-hmm. And I don't like that because then it just feels like everything that Krypton ever did was evil except Superman. Yeah. So I like that it really – this does show you, okay, Brainiac is not Kryptonian. He's creating – he's going throughout space and he's destroying uh, just cultures, civilizations, gathering knowledge eradicating things yeah there have been there have been so many versions of brainiac like he's been a machine he's been biological but yeah i I like it when they don't i mean some versions are right but yeah they i like it when they separate him from the kryptonian stuff and he's like what was that planet call it call you or something he was from yeah like right after and like like, i like like right after crisis they did a thing where like he basically be i don't know if he like beamed his consciousness into like a human guy and it was, he was like a human guy for a while with like t- mental powers. That's cool. I need to I need to reread Crisis. It's been too long. Well, it's like right I tried to like, find it. It's like right after it was in the Superman books. Like right after Crisis. See, I found it at the library, but they had the novelization and not the graphic novel of it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, eh, I want to enjoy the graphic novel. But yeah, like between Crisis and Death of Superman, like that Brainiac, he was like, yeah, he was like in a human body. Now. I like that the relationship they show that Kara has with Ma and Pa Kent, just trying to build that dynamic. Uh, like I've said before, is I think Kara is a much more interesting character because she is a teenager, mm-hmm. but she's lost so much of her life and time. But she was raised on Krypton, and she remembers it. And now she's basically being forced to adopt this new culture, this new place, and – basically copy what her cousin's doing without making the choices for herself. It's everyone's telling her what she could or should do. So I always, I always feel sorry for her in that light. I think, yeah, I think a lot of times she seems more relatable. Just like the struggle and, you know, what would you do with superpower, you know, superpowers? Uh Oh, my little super boys just walked in. <laughs> so low. He's wearing his Superman shirt. <laughs> He's like, "What's up, Dad?" Oh, you're just talking. Okay, bye. It's like, um, he's like, "Yeah, Dad, gonna get breakfast." <laughs> I, 
I love that Jimmy has that crush on Supergirl. Like, yeah. I just think that's always uh, one of the best. Like, little dynamics is like Superman's best pal and friend. Now it's a crush on his cousin. He's like, hold on there, buddy. I know we're friends, but <laughs> there's a line, Jimmy. Mm. And that's one of the things I'm waiting to see play out in Supergirl TV series. He's going, like, you, you, you what? You like my cousin? Uh, uh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, Jimmy. You know I can burn you alive, right? <laughs> but it's like, you know, if, can you blame him? I mean, she's like the perfect package. She's good looking. She has a good personality and she can lift a bus with one hand. <laughs> For real. That's all I'm going to say. For real. <laughs> but I like that in this, uh, you know, we talk about, we get to meet the city of Kandor that Brainiac has, <laughs> in which has Kara's parents. And it's neat that Clark gets to meet his aunt and uncle. And the first thing they say is, you know, you look just like your father. Which is awesome. Which brings me back to another one of my pet peeves is every comic story, and even the animated series, establishes that Jor-El and Kal-El look strikingly similar. Mm-hmm. But they never cast actors to look like each other. Even Solomon is outraged by it. Yeah, He's but like, I mean, it, it's a lot. Russell Crowe like, does not look like Henry Cavill. Marlon Brando does not look like Christopher Reeve. Yeah, but one, it, it's harder to do that in, in uh, live action animation. You can just draw them to look similar. But uh, with the Superman movies, I mean, just look, the Christopher Reeve ones, you had Marlon Brando. And in the newest, you know, in Man of Steel, you had uh, Russell, Russell Crowe. Crow. So basically, I guess they they figured they would rather have like a big name actor than someone who just looks, you know, someone we might not know who looks similar. I, I always said that with Man of Steel, it should have been John Hamm. John Hamm should have been jor But, you know, mm-hmm. I'll just keep saying that forever. Anyways, I really like the story of just how strong Kara gets depicted. Mm-hmm. And she starts to come into her own. And the idea, like towards the end, you know, where Clark... And Kira are able to free Kandar and basically try to create new Krypton. Like, I would have liked to have seen that as a film. You know, the animated film of new Krypton. What about you? Um, yeah, I, I mean, you could just, you could do it like a whole, like, mini series that, you know, a couple, a couple uh, different, uh, fall, you know, part one, part two, part three. That, that's my big problem. But my one big problem with these movies is I don't know why if they think they're, they're too short, you know. It, it, all these movies are around 75, 76 minutes. Yep. And give us a good I, hour and a half. And I'm like, why are they short? Yeah, give us at least 90 minutes. Why are they sh- so short? I'm like, I could see if they were saying, you know, it's for, you know, kids have short attention spans. But most of these movies are PG-13 these days. Yeah, most of these are the ones that are made for adults. No! You know, yeah. they, they, make, they make the Batman Unlimited and I have a Justice League, like, out of time or something mm. that was that are made more for kids. Um, so these are made more for the teen, adult audiences and everything like that. But give me some more story. Give me some more to it than just the quick, the quickness that we have. Because there's a lot more to, to just kind of create. Like, the part where they crash on Earth mm. and Brainiac, like, gets out and he starts experiencing everything. He's, like, freaking out. Because just trying to bring in that attention, mm-hmm. he starts noticing everything. And and another thing was like the way, the thing about Superman that always was kind of interesting to me was when they depict him having powers on other planets. And I'm like, I don't know if he would have powers on other planets because of the whole red sun, yellow sun, atmosphere thing. So that's always a very interesting uh, way they do things. As long as it's a yellow sun, because I'm I I'm guessing, isn't a yellow sun younger than a red sun? So yes, I'm guessing if this yeah if the if the, if the sun maybe it doesn't matter as long as like a star is young enough he can absorb powers from it. But if the star is too depleted, it's not going to give him powers. I guess it's all pseudoscience. Well, yeah, I mean especially since they created all most of the rules in 1938. <laughs> That had to be t- constantly revamped and redone and, you know, all that fun stuff. Mm. But I, I don't know. I really like this movie. Each time I watch it, I enjoy it more. Mm-hmm. 
It's, it was the last solo Superman effort. And they haven't done as many solo Superman films as they've done Batman. But they have done quite a few of them. Mm-hmm. Well, even I wish the name had been better, though. Yeah, I was like, Superman Unbound. Unbound. Should have been like Superman Brainiac or something. Yeah, like Superman Supergirl. Or like Superman vs. Brainiac. Since that's the only thing that DC can title anything is something vs. something. Superman Supergirl v. Brainiac. Like like Assault on Arkham should have been Batman vs. Suicide Squad. Yeah, although I don't know if Batman's name should have really been in that. It wasn't. It was just a marketing thing just to kind of people... Oh, Batman. Yeah, it was like the live act, it was like the live action movie. He was about he was a he was in the animation maybe a little more than the live action movie, but yeah, it was basically the same. They just would have said like if they would have said Batman Suicide Squad or something like that or the Suicide Squad and then just it has Batman in it, but yeah. the marketing was the mar- the titles for a lot of these movies have been off. Like Batman vs. Robin, Justice League vs. Teen Titans. Yeah, but you were, like you were saying, this was the last solo uh, Superman story. We don't even get a, like a lot of solo Batman stories anymore because every every movie he's either with Damien and Nightwing or he's with the Justice League. True. I, I mean, yeah. and I'm not complaining. I mean, I I enjoy the Bat Family stuff, and I like, like I said, the continuity of the films. But I like that they're in a groove where they can give me like two continuity films a year and then two. Elseworlds tales, mm-hmm. like I would be fine with, like an original idea and one based off a graphic novel. That's fine because it, it's cool to see them come to life, you know. Mm-hmm. Just like, uh, oh, what do you call it? The uh, New Frontier. But what would you rate Superman Unbound? Um, out of five. Out of five. Uh, I would say probably. I don't know. Probably somewhere between four and four and a half. I'm right there with you. There's a lot that I like to it. I think it's a it's a very good, solid Superman film. And I'm trying to remember what was before this, which movie was before this, but I'm thinking... Um, this this followed right after the uh, double feature of the uh, Dark Knight Returns. Okay, because I was going to say, this animation style, it seems like this might have been the beginnings of what, they, what they're doing now. They did Dark Knight Returns, Superman Unbound, and then they did Flashpoint. And that technically was the end. Technically, it's the beginning of their animated collective. Because if you think about it, at the very end, the animation style and everything Mm -hmm. uh, is kind of New 52-ish. But then with the next film, which is Justice League War, is when they have the same actors pretty much in the same animation that they carry over now through each film. Yeah. So... It almost seems like the animation in this, they were kind of like feeling stuff out, saying, "Okay, what do we, you know, once we hit New Fifty Two, what are we, what what do we want to keep from this? What do we want to not use?" And I'm waiting to see if they do something with Rebirth. Mm-hmm. Like, They're I smart. think that could be the real. Yeah, if they would do that as an animated film. Mm-hmm. But we're probably gonna be waiting a while on that because they haven't revealed, you know, everything behind Rebirth yet. You know, the whole Doctor Manhattan thing and. Exactly. I mean, I feel like what they're doing now is they every year, basically, they give us like two animated films, or, and then we get to Comic Con, and they announce the next four, and then that are already in production. So it's not like we're waiting that long. We get to know what's coming out when. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if there's already one down the pipeline that they'll announce like next year or something, like fall of 2017. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like we were saying, they need to start uh, getting on the Flash and Arrow stuff. Give us the animated that, and I, I'm always harping on this. But give us a uh, Nightwing solo. I like Bad Blood, but he, he should have been more solo. See, um, exactly with Bad Blood doing as well as it had, you can spin off and do a Nightwing film. Like, let's expand the characters. I mean, when they did the solo Nightwing, the, I mean the solo Wonder Woman, solo Green Lantern films. Mm-hmm. It was so early in these animated films, like they didn't do as well. Mm-hmm. And I really liked the Wonder Woman film. There's a lot that I liked to Green Lantern and First Flight, but I really enjoy the Wonder Woman movie. Mm-hmm. I think it just came out at the wrong time because it was the third film they did. Yeah, they did Superman Doomsday, and then they did the Gotham Knights, which was just weird, and then Wonder Woman, 
Yeah, but and it just like, kind of it lost in the shuffle. I mean, one of my favorites is uh, Under the Red Hood. Oh yeah, that's that's the best. Mm-hmm. And once again, that one's based off a graphic novel. Mm-hmm. It's a reimagining of a graphic novel, which works. I like it better than the actual book. Yeah, but it, that's the thing. Even if you don't give us a uh, Nightwing solo, give us like a uh, give us like a Robin movie with just uh, Dick and Damien, and you bring in Red Hood and Red Robin. That's what I want in comics too. Give us like a like a Robin book with just the four of them, even if they take turns. Even if it's like a short story arc. Mm-hmm. Phil and I could talk forever, people. That's probably why we talk so often. <laughs> I'm sitting here in my fortress recording. Phil's in his cave, which I've seen his cave. So there's always plenty of stuff to inspire us and continue conversation. Yep. Anything else you want to add to the end here, Phil, before we go about the rest of our day? Uh, I don't think so. Like I said, I enjoyed this. I was telling you the other day, like I hadn't watched this in a while and I, I'd forgotten a lot of it. So I just watched, I watched it real quick last night and yeah, I forgot how good this was. I hadn't watched it in a while until I decided to watch it a while back because I remember how prominent Supergirl was in it and I, was like, I wanted to revisit it and talk about it. Mm-hmm. And just it's it's a high recommend for the animated films because it is it does stand on its own, which makes it nice. <laughs> Solomon enjoyed watching it with me. <laughs> he's he's like, Daddy, what are you doing? <laughs> All right, man. Well, how how's your little Robin? The uh, Luke, Luca's good. They're about to have a Robin and Superboy about to meet up here. Just in- That's right. Yeah. Oh, Luca's been uh into the CW stuff because we just got Legends of Tomorrow season one the other day, and he's all about it, all about Cap Cold. Would you like to share your adventure of trying to find that on Blu-ray? Because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Um, well, usually we go down to Target or and or Walmart, and neither one of them had it on Blu-ray. Um, Target had, like, two or three copies on DVD. That was it. And I don't think Walmart had any copies. I was like, what, they don't think it's going to sell? It's, I said, it's 2016. I understand if you don't, if you, I don't know, download digital or whatever, you don't get the Blu-ray, but don't you think they, on the first day of release, they should have, you know, it all available? Yeah, I agree. I mean, like, I had to make my list for Black Friday. That's usually when I buy everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to continue to buy Arrow on DVD mm-hmm. just because I have the first three seasons on DVD. Yes. And I'm kind of like a pure person that. <laughs> but I have Flash on Blu-ray, so I'll buy Flash Season 2 on Blu-ray. Yeah. And I'll get Legends on Blu-ray. And it's kind of like how I, I just recently started buying all these DC animated movies on Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. And I know they've re-released some of the older ones on Blu-ray, and I'm like, for right now, I have them, you know, Blu-ray and DVD, but eventually maybe I like to have them just straight. But, I mean, yeah, I understand everybody doesn't get the disc. They like to, you know, download it, but all these stores say, oh, why is the, why, why is the internet beating us so badly? Well, that's the reason. Yeah, it's the reason is they don't have them. You know, it's not like it's an old movie I'm walking in looking for. It just came out that day, you know, that yes. week. So that's that's what kills me is they talk about why are we getting beat? Well, maybe because I go into the store to look for something and you don't have it. And then I'm like, where else am I going to buy it? Well, I guess I just have to go online. Like, I am not a fan of dump bins like at, at Walmart. Oh, I hate I wanna, through those. If I, if I find one and I'm like, oh, I want to look for a movie. Do you guys have this? I don't know. Like, do you guys don't have any kind of inventory? No. All right, I'm going somewhere else. All right, well, I gotta get out of here because Superboy is getting agitated and he's about ready to fly up and knock some stuff off the shelf. So, all right, all right, man, you take care. I'll talk with you later. Okay. And uh, all of us fans out there, they know how to reach you, right? Uh, I I would hope so. Uh, NightwingPDP at gmail dot com or Twitter's at NightwingPDP. All right, hit Phil up for any comic book knowledge. Because the man is a walking encyclopedia. And you're probably hearing and this on, I was going to say, you're probably hearing this on here, but check out uh, me, Tyler, and all our friends on the uh, upcoming Legends of DC podcast as well. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. All right. Bye.